here's Mike here. Hey, just for a little change of pace here today, we'll do a little bit of TIG welding. As you recall from one of my last videos, this is the spare prop off this 115 horse Mercury. And uh, it's never been on the Mercury. I just kept it around for a spare. And uh, it's, it's kind of a, a good practice to have a spare if you're, you know, a thousand miles away from home on a fishing trip and you do happen to spin your prop off it's always nice to, to have a spare to back you up. So this particular prop is not in bad shape except for this crack right here. And uh, this has totally lost its integrity. So the first little bit of tap on this thing is going to break this piece off. So you can see this crack runs through here. It runs up to about here. So uh, what we'll do is we'll clean the paint off of this. We'll clean this up real good with acetal. Uh, we might even thin this out a little bit, even though this prop is very, very thin here. You, you can tell this thing has been uh, uh, scoured by uh, sand uh, through its life. So it is quite thin, um, but it should be very weldable. Uh, just a little bit of history on this prop. This came off of a ski boat, a professional ski boat that towed uh, skiers in a ski show. And so it's seen a lot of usage. So uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll go over and check the settings on the TIG welder. Okay, what you're seeing here is my old Miller Dial Arc welder. And there's nothing fancy about this welder. This is about as old school as you can get. It's a transformer welder. It's capable of doing uh, TIG and stick welding. And uh, it's, you know, a transformer welder that uh, weighs about 500 pounds. So just checking the settings, I can see here that the last time I used it, uh, I had been done doing some TIG welding. But we'll just go through the controls and double check. And uh, uh, first of all, on the right hand side here on the bottom, this is the post flow time. And they give you a little chart here that um, uh, it gives you a kind of reference uh, based on the size of the uh, electrode that you're using in the TIG welder. And uh, in this particular case, I'll stay with this, it says 3.30 seconds, and what they recommend is about a uh, 15 second post flow. Uh, so we'll leave that there. Uh, we're going to weld aluminum, so uh, I can see the last time I used this, I was welding steel. I just had it on start, and there's three positions. There's start, off, and continuous. And I would turn it off if I was doing arc welding, but uh, because this is aluminum, we'll put it on continuous. Uh, the remote contract attacker, that's uh, the foot pedal, basically, and uh, we want that on. Remote amperage, yes, we do want to control it remotely. That's on. Uh, this is just the circuit breaker here. And uh, we have, right here, we have ranges. The way this works for the amperage settings is ranges. Um, uh, one set of ranges for the AC side and one for the DC side. And we're going to use uh, AC, so the, when the lever is in the top position, it gives you a, a range of 140 to uh, 310 amps. Uh, the middle position, 40 to 165 amps. And the bottom position, 10 to 45 amps. We'll just leave this in the uh, middle position, uh, which is 40 to 165 amps. And... Uh, basically the way this works is if this middle dial right here is percentage of uh, amperage adjustment. So, 0% of 40 amps on the bottom would be 40 amps. If I turn this all up to 100%, I should get the full 165 amp. And I'll, 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 I'll set this on... Uh, uh, probably about uh, 70 percent um, and uh, over here is the uh, three positions one for straight polarity uh, which is uh, that would be electrode negative um, then you have a center position for AC and you have a bottom position which is uh, reverse polarity which is electrode positive um, when you're arc welding uh, you know, it's pretty much straight polarity, or TIG welding on steel, it's pretty well straight polarity uh, electrode negative. 
We're doing aluminum, so we're going to put the switch down on AC. And that's about as simple uh, of a welder for TIG welding that you can get. Uh, there's no pulse or anything like that. If, there's, if you're going to get pulse on this, you're going to do a little tap dance with your foot on the foot pedal. So that's pretty much an overview of my welder. So let's continue to get ready to uh, weld this pro. Now that the compressor is off, we can continue. Um, the first thing we'll do is clean this uh, cracked area off top and bottom, get rid of all the paint, and we'll clean up an area over here where the ground clamp will attach. So uh, let's get started on that. Scotch uh, bright uh, abrasive pads. Well, I guess it's not Scotch bright, but um, it's a 3M abrasive pad, and uh, hopefully it'll remove the paint without uh, taking much material off because that's pretty thin there to begin with. Now I'm going to take this little ball nose carbide burr and go right up the crack and uh, I'll try not to take much off because it's thin enough as it is. And so now that we've got that little crack beat out, we'll take some acetone and a stainless steel brush and we'll clean this up as good as we can. So the next I'm going to put a little uh, heat sink on this. And I have this little Harbor Freight uh, copper paddle. And it has a curve, and it just about matches the curve on the propeller. So I'm going to fasten that on here. Let's put it on like this. And that'll give me a backup. So. I don't burn the corner off. Okay, so next step, I've got the uh, power cord to the welder, and I have the argon on, and I'm using a uh, gas lens on this particular uh, job, and uh, I think what I'll do is, I think I will ball the tip slightly. Okay, I'll put you in a different camera position here, and um, you know, all you're going to see is a bright light, but uh, that's better than looking at my back.
Okay, folks, here's the uh, results, and um, I didn't uh, blend out all the way back into here because the blade was getting kind of thin, so I left this thin here, but this portion out here is about the right thickness. Uh, there's a couple little polka dots here, and uh, I ended my bead right here. Uh, I didn't want to get any closer to that edge, so that's some of the old uh, repair that someone had done on this. And, uh, yeah, so here's the way the back side looked. Again, there's the polka dots of a previous fix. I, I suppose I should have welded it right up to the edge, but I didn't. Anyway, for a spare prop, that's going to be good enough. So we'll just put a little coat of paint on that and throw her in the trailer and use it. Let's see, let's get that in focus and, and use that as our backup. Okay, that's all for this one. See you next time. This is Mike, signing out.